let's talk a little bit more about chalk pastels. So I'm going to show you, looks like I have 11 different techniques here that you can use with chalk pastels. So the first thing I'm going to show you is chalk over ripped paper, and then I'm gonna show you chalk over cut paper too. So I'm gonna prepare the papers uh, both by ripping and cutting, and then I'll show you. So all I did there is I have this ripped piece of paper, I laid the ripped piece of paper down, and then using my chalk pastel, I traced along the tear and then used my finger to smear it a little bit. So now it looks like I've got some lights coming up from behind a mountain. The same thing is going to apply here with cut paper. I'm going to trace around the edge of that cut paper and use my finger to smear. So very similar effects, just the edges are either very smooth or have a little bit of texture to them. The next thing I can do is dip my chalk in water. So I'm gonna show you this on uh, black paper. I'll also show you this on a little, little corner here of my white paper too. So the difference between wet dipping my chalk in water and having a wet chalk versus a dry chalk. So the dry chalk definitely has got some texture going on, feels a little, like it looks kind of bumpy. My wet chalk is very smooth. Down here we have blending. So that is using my finger to create a blend between two different colors, two or more colors. I could use three or four. Okay, next thing I can do is create little strokes. I can create texture. Um, it can look like fur, hair, all sorts of different things, grass, just by using my pastel to create small, tiny strokes. I can use uh, hatching or cross-hatching, and hatching is a way to create value. So here I have hatching. So hatching is a series of parallel lines, straight lines. And like I said, it creates value or makes it look like there are darker areas down here at the bottom of, of my sphere. Over here is the cross hatching. So that is when I have the parallel lines, but then I go over top and create perpendicular lines as well. My side stroke. So that is when I use the side of my oil pastel to cover a large area and I can vary the pressure of this. So I can press a little bit harder or, or a little bit lighter, and that's gonna give me different looks. Very hard pressure here, very heavy pressure, light pressure here. I have two different looks from that. Uh, a lighter color, more vibrant color, darker. I can also layer those side strokes. And those colors, when I do that, will blend a little bit. So now instead of just this, this kind of normal looking green, I have a little bit more of a lime green here. So another really great way to create texture for grass, hair, um, is feathering. I can twist. So I've found for me, this is easier when I have a smaller piece of chalk and I will lay it on its side, pinch, and twist it. Next, I have stippling. So that's using little tiny dots to create texture. Okay, so pebbles by the beach, sand, rocks, um, all sorts of things that you can create just with using little tiny dots or stippling. And last but not least, we have draw. So you can also just simply draw with chalk pastels. And again, pressure will determine how vibrant, how dark your color is. So if I am light with my chalk, I'm going to have a little bit of a lighter color. If I push harder with my chalk, that color is going to be much brighter.